I want to greet the leadership of New Life, the pastorate of New Life, a few who accompanied me here. And um, before I talk about my mother, I loved it when you said young man. I loved it. That of Rika. Amen. Uh, it is a great honor to be in this August house. It is really a great honor. So please wear better faces for me. Don't intimidate me so that I can preach well. But before you sit down, my mother and my father in the Lord, our mom and our dad, Bishop Tudor Bismarck and Mom Chichi Bismarck, Celebrate them, church, please. Celebrate them for me. And we may be seated in the heavenly places. Today, I'm going to preach under the title 333. Triple three doesn't scare as much as another triple that I will not really talk about now. <laughs> Can we have Jeremiah 33, verse 3? Jeremiah 33, verse 3. We know it right. Call unto me. Is it Jeremiah 333? 3, 3? Call unto me, and I'll answer you. I'll give you, I'll show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Hosea 4 verse 6. Call unto me. This is God saying, call unto me. I'll answer you. This is how I'll answer you. I will show you. I will reveal great and mighty things you did not know. Knowledge. So when you call unto God, when you pray, God answers. But how he answers, he gives you revelation. And the revelation will lead you to knowledge. So that's what 333 Jeremiah mean. Or see 46. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being priest for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. My people's marriages are destroyed. Is it for lack of love? My people's finances are destroyed. Is it for lack of education? For lack of knowledge? Everything that destroys anyone is at a knowledge level. And the battle in the spirit realm between good and evil is a battle to transfer knowledge and control human minds and emotions through the knowledge the spirit realm can pass through to people. We're fighting at a knowledge level. The invisible forces that are fighting for your soul, they are fighting is to occupy a space called your mind. And that mind will absorb invisible voices you can't hear, transmissions. And those transmissions will give you a knowledge or would deprive you of the holy knowledge and the knowledge you are deprived from will lead to the evil knowledge that you end up getting access to and that's what destroys people so my people are destroyed because they don't have knowledge people do not have knowledge because they don't call unto God because when people call unto God, God answers. And how he answers, he gives revelation. And revelation in biblical context as a theologian, I can put it under the name exegesis. To exegete is to extract, to extrapolate scripture. So revelational exegesis is the order of this house. This house exegetes the revelation of God's word. And that revelation needs to supernatural knowledge. 
and supernatural knowledge leads to somebody doing powerful things. I was Googling uh, how Satya Sia Baba, who had eight, eight million followers, yes, about eight million followers, uh, was training people to become magicians. And I saw that he took only one year to train people into the occultic and they start producing magical illusions and magical creations after just one year of training. But we have people in church who have been in church for 10 years, 15, 20, 25 years. The diagnosis of God. You know, diagnosis, they date back to the millions of years ago. But still those people can't pray a prayer that can move one vocal cord. Because when they are praying, they are not praying until revelation concerning what they are looking for is dispatched for the knowledge which will overcome. Second Corinthians 10 verse 3, though we walk in this natural world, not the cosmos, the eons, we don't fight using the weapons of this natural world but the weapons of our warfare. He didn't say my warfare, he said our. Meaning every Christian is going through and will participate in warfare. He said they are not natural, but are mighty through God, spirit. God is spirit. Through spirit God. To the pulling down of strongholds. And strongholds are defined as fortifications or medieval or middle edge high wall, walls to fortify or protect a city but is also described as mental processes thought systems and belief systems that have become a way of life then imaginations imagination that you know we think in pictures we don't think in numbers we don't think in words we think in pictures we dream in pictures he says, imaginations. Because what you imagine, you are going to pursue. What you imagine is going to become your world. And every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. Number three, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. All the four has to do with the mind and the knowledge realm. All the four. Meaning, it takes demonic revelation... For someone to sit down, plot and plan, to get into Israel, kill over 1,000 people, abduct, abduct people, behead 42 babies, rape over 100 women, take hostage over 100 people. Because that diabolic knowledge knows that there's going to be a response and the response can be a Sarajevo assassination. It's the knowledge level. So, whatever challenge you may be having pertaining your family, pertaining health, pertaining finances, and your spiritual life is at a knowledge level. What revelation is, is, is perpetuating in your mindset? What kind of revelation? So I'll give you a few things, uh, then we wrap up. Now, how do you access the revelation? The Bible says, call unto me. And what will revelation do? It gives you overcoming knowledge, empowering knowledge, enriching knowledge, knowledge that that's uh, uh, clock some buttons for you to be in another level so after i preach today i'm expecting revelation through the dream world i'm expecting revelation through the bible i'm expecting revelation through the altar and i'm expecting the revelations through prayer and meditation so can we get revelation Chapter 4, verse 7. Revelation 4, 7. There was a woman clothed with the sun. The light was on her side. Under her feet was a moon. The night was on her side. And above her were 12 stars. The seasons were on her side. This is Revelation 12 from verse 1. Meaning, when you are walking in Revelation, the light, the sun is on your side. Then if the sun is on your side, the moon will be under you because the moon only reflects from the sun. And the seasons will be on your side. 
then when these three are in sync, you will be pregnant with what's missing in your family and your family tree system, your geographical system, your constituency. And when you're pregnant with what was missing before your father was even born, there will be some creature that will challenge you, that will attack you, that will fight you, because Satan is not only scared of your salvation, he is scared of fruit. When David was anointed, the devil never showed up. But David said to King Saul that when your servant was tendering his father's flock, the lion came and grabbed the lamb. He didn't grab the ram, but the lamb, the fruit. Then, then, then when the woman was about to give birth, there was somebody waiting to pounce on the fruit, the boy child who was to be born. Remember Moses when he was a baby. Remember Lord Jesus when he was a baby. Satan had fruit. That's why Jesus said every branch that does not bear fruit, the father would take it out. So, so we need testimonies in church. We, we need testimonies. We, we need fruit. Hallelujah. So when the fruit came, there was a beast called Satan who he had metastasized into seven heads, ten horns, seven crowns with a red color because the red color is the blood of the saints that he had drunk before. And in verse 7, let's read what happened then. Verse 7, Revelation 12, and war broke out in heaven. Is it coming? And war broke out in heaven. The dragon and his angels fought against Michael and his angels. Now, war broke out in heaven. Revelation 12 from verse 6 shows that we are fighting something that fights. We're fighting something that fights. So there is this uh, uh, new gospel that says if you are born again in Christ, once saved, you are always saved. And that gospel always also says when you are born again in Christ, there's no spiritual warfare. It's done. Then the people who are pushing that gospel that there will be no spiritual warfare, they're ending up with four wives. Are you getting what I'm saying? That, that say there is nothing called an altar. Uh, a prayer should be three minutes. Then we go around and do what we, we, we need to do. That's diabolical revelation. Because grace is not the power that keeps you in Egypt. Grace is the power that takes you out of Egypt. So now, we are fighting someone and something that fights. So he fought. I want you to get this. And Michael also fought back. Then Michael won. And in Daniel chapter 10, Daniel fast for 20 and one days, praying for Jeremiah 25 to be fulfilled. Then on verse 11, an angel appeared and said, Daniel, from the first day you started praying, God dispatched your answer. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 20 and one days. Now, because you continued to pray for 20 and 1 days, you didn't give up on verse 2, verse 4, or on day 2, day 9, or day 16. Michael, the archangel, was dispatched by God to assist me into defeating the prince of Persia and breaking forth to coming to you. Meaning, real relentless prayer, it provokes angelic assistance. People who can't pray until, people can push through, they, they will suffer because God might have released your answer a long time ago, but there is a prince of the kingdom of Buera, the kingdom of uh, Nyazura, the kingdom of Karoi or Chipinge that is resisting. Are you getting what I'm saying? So prayer is related to the angelic forces. What we are doing here on earth is, is, is so significant to what will then reciprocate in heaven. What you bind on earth is bound in heaven. What you lose on earth is loose in heaven. Angels are counting on you. 
Your answers are counting on you. So now, Satan is the head of his pyramid. And under him are forces. I'm going to just give you three. Uh, am I going to get my Bible now? All right. I'm going to give you three. The first I'll give you is Jezebel. You know, the spirits, the demonic spirits that Jesus himself in the book of Revelation 2 and 3, he spoke by name. Uh, one of them is Jezebel. He spoke about the church of Pegamos. Then he said the seat of Satan is there. So he revealed a spirit called Satan to the church of Pegamos and said his seat is in, is in your city. Then, by the way, there, is, there are two countries in Africa that sounds like the seat of Satan is there. I'll just leave it like that. <laughs> then he said, you have tolerated the, that wicked woman Jezebel who calls herself a, 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 a prophetess and a teacher, but really he is a prostitute and a witch. So Jesus spoke about Jezebel. Then he spoke about Balaam. Jezebel is not a loose woman who is well-dressed and well dolded up, ready to pounce on the little understanding man. And Jezebel is not a young man in nice sneakers and nice jeans and t-shirt who is busy going to the gym so that he becomes a slay king. <laughs> Jezebel is a spirit. Yes. Now that spirit, Jesus said, is prostitution and witchcraft. Witchcraft is a demon that kills some vital emotions in a human being to make the person in psychology, they call them narcissists. So a person under a spirit of Jezebel will lose vital emotions of number one, love. They can't love. They are transactional. Number two, empathy. They can't feel sorry. They feed on someone's tears and pain. And number three, um, uh, remorse. They are not remorseful. And number four, guilt. They don't feel guilty. So they don't have those human emotions, meaning they are more likely going to succeed in life than you, a normal person. Because they can do all it takes to get what they want to get. Because they are human machines. They, they lack humanity in them. Then number five is a spirit of manipulation. Number six is a spirit of control. Number seven, it's a pathological liar. It, it can lie through its teeth you think is true. Number eight, it's a spirit that uses people. It sees people as stepping stones, not as humans. Number nine, it's, it's a spirit that justifies the, 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 the means by the ends. And number ten, it's a spirit that values money over, over integrity and morals. And number 11, it's a spirit that cannot be loyal. It's a spirit of disloyalty. Every rebellion, every church split, every church civil war, every church politics is sponsored by Jezebel. Because it's a spirit of divide and rule. It's also a spirit of competence. Because it passes its intelligence to the host. So people under this spirit can do so well when they are designated a duty. And they are well polished in doing it, but they do it in order to gain your trust, get close to you, and step. Number 12 is a very lustful spirit. It cannot be content. Number 13, it uses sex as a weapon, either female or male. Number 14, it is also, a, because it is witchcraft in itself, it's a spirit of divination. People under this spirit will visit a spiritist or a sangoma at one time in their lives. And number 15, the spirit of Jezebel is also a spirit of confusion. Because it loves to usurp power and rule over people, it thrives in confusion. And number 16, that spirit also is a spirit of, of mental challenges. It targets the mind because it wants total control. And number 17, the spirit of Jezebel is a spirit of deception. It knows the right face to show you. And after six months 
of being with the sweetest woman on earth and the sweetest man under the planet, the true face comes out and people are ruined. When Jezebel deals with you, you may never recover again. It is dirty, it is wicked. And Jezebel was Jezebel powerless until she got married to Ahab. Because it's a usurping spirit. So it loves to be in the vicinity of people in authority and power. It is a deadly spirit. And number two, there is a spirit of Antichrist. First uh, John chapter 4 from verse 1 to 4, Paul began to warn people and say, there is a spirit that has already been unleashed by the devil. And this spirit is the spirit of Antichrist. Any person who calls Jesus his Lord is operating by the spirit of God. But the spirit of Antichrist has been revealed in this way. It has been revealed in this way. Then when he spoke about how Antichrist is revealed, he didn't reveal of a person who is speaking or preaching against Christ. He said, any person who does not believe that Jesus came in the natural form is operating by Antichrist. So what does First John 4 verse 1 to 4 tells us? It tells us that any spirit that wants you to be a prayer warrior, a big giver, someone who comes to church consistently, someone who talks about God consistently, but with nothing about God, church, or his or her confession to show for in the natural world, is a person who is under attack from the spirit of Antichrist. You didn't hear me well. Qatar, Qatar last year spent close to $5 billion making stadiums, which they are disassembling now to give other raw materials to Mexico for the next World Cup because they no longer need it. It's a small country. Just for World Cup, for a few people to kick leather with, with, with hot air inside, they spent $5 billion. No one will complain about it. But if a church says we are building for 25 million, people will start complaining. Because the spirit of Antichrist does not want Christ to be revealed in the flesh. Is somebody hearing me? Now how do I convince my cousin that Jesus is all that you need when I am 40 and very single and she's 30, has fired three good men and is with the fourth one? How do I convince somebody that Jesus will make everything come good for you when the person is buying a fourth Rolls Royce and I'm borrowing him money for rent? Antichrist does not want the spirit of God, the power of God to be manifested in the natural world. Now for God to be manifested in the natural world, prayer is the first medium. This is how you pray. You say, our Father, sovereign. Sovereign is, 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 oh, is reign and, 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 uh, and it's S, right? O, V, right? Then reign. So sovereign means somebody who solves issues and reigns over them. So our Father means you are sovereign. You reign over who is in heaven, what is your name? Let your kingdom come. And this is how your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Let your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Now what does that mean? What that means is the Lord three times cried to God, I wish Father you could edit some scriptures and remove them from the Bible. Because all things are possible for you. So that we get things without struggling. But nevertheless, your will not mine. The will of God is not easy, sister and brother. Because Jesus, our Lord and Savior, was with his Father. And with the Holy Ghost. And the three but one planned. And in their plan, they handpicked Mary before time. They handpicked Joseph before time. They handpicked Zechariah and Elizabeth before time. Handpicked John the Baptist before time. And handpicked Judas Iscariot before time. Then they came, he came into time. 
And because he had a component which the Father and the Holy Ghost did not have, the flesh, he discovered that what we plan together in heaven is not easy to perpetrate when you are in the earth realm in an earthen vessel. Then he says, but to seal the argument, let it be your will, not mine. Now, that will took him to the cross. But now, check years later. Because in Revelation chapter 5, John sees the throne, sees the four living creatures, sees the 24 elders, sees the archangels, the seven spirits of God, and the rainbow of God. Then he heard a loud voice saying, who will break the seals of his crow? No one in heaven or on earth was found worthy except one person. Now, the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God who was slain, will, not mine, your will, not mine, slain, your will, not mine, slain, your will, not mine, but now is receiving power. Now is receiving glory. Now is receiving riches. Now is receiving authority. Now is receiving wisdom. Now is receiving knowledge. And now it is receiving the Godhead. The Godhead. Seven revelations, seven manifestations are now manifesting because let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So if you do things in the will, you will receive the seven revelations of heaven that makes you a God on earth. You did not hear me well. You did not hear me well. The kingdom is in the will. Now, now, I want to show you something. And he said now, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who, who sin against us. Now, prayer has to do also with confessing and dealing with our sins and weaknesses. Then now he says, lead us not into temptation, spiritual warfare. Then number three, he said, give us today our daily bread. Weekly bread, does your Bible say weekly bread? Monthly bread? Yearly bread? It says daily. Why daily bread? Because in Matthew 6 verse 34, the Lord Jesus said, enough are today's troubles, or enough is today's evil. Tomorrow's evil take off itself, because Satan has an evil for everyone, every day. That's why the mercies of God are new every morning, not every year, because Satan has a plan every day. So because Satan is an everyday evil, God says prayer should be a daily endeavor. If prayer then is this powerful, why is somebody not praying? Then number three, there is a spirit called Beelzebub. Beelzebub, you find it in Matthew chapter 12. In Matthew chapter 12, from verse number 22, Jesus cast out a demon and used a mute and blind person. Then the Pharisees began to say in their hearts, this man is not using God's power. He's using the spirit of Beelzebub, the prince of demons. Why did they single out Beelzebub, not Jezebel? Because in the Greek mythology, they said Beelzebub was a demon prince who was revealed by the Jews as second in command from Satan. And not only second in command from Satan, but the Lord of the flies. Why Lord of the flies? Flies, ladies and gentlemen, we all hate flies, right? Because flies, they spread bacteria. So, I used to think when I was young that flies, they feast on, on rotten things. They eat rotten things. Then they come and vomit them on my sada. That's what I thought. Until better biology came into my mind and I understood that um, flies, they don't go around eating bacteria. But whatever they eat, the challenge is they have fairs on their legs and their, lo their uh, inner abdomen. That is an irritation which needs bacteria. So when they land on bacteria, then come on your sadza 
or in your American goulash, they are depositing bacteria. And bacteria start spreading. And when it's in your system, it spreads faster than uh, many things you may even think. Like vibrocholereo, the bacteria that causes cholera. Very powerful bacteria. It will spread so fast and your system will try to flush it out until you dehydrate and die. So why then would they say this one is number two from Satan? Because when Satan said to the Lord Jesus in Matthew 4 verse 8, if you can bow down to worship me, all the kingdoms, the riches and the glory of the earth are mine and I'll give them to whoever I wish to give. Remember, Jesus didn't say you are lying. Then he said, if you just bow down to worship me, I'll give you. Where did he get those things? From Adam, of course, in, in Genesis chapter 3. But how does he run the system? The systems are run by Beelzebub. By Beelzebub. How does he do that? How is it that our choir can produce three nice songs and they will take 30 years to get a million views? But some drunk man on drugs who is tattooed from face to the toes, who sing three lines. I remember when we were young, we had a song called Hindemoni. Do, do you remember the song Hindemoni? If you remember that song, you are not a young man, you are not a young woman, accept it. <laughs> so Hindemoni was just, just two lines, but it shook Africa. It shook Africa. Then we were singing Ishe Kombore Rai everywhere, and we were not even seeing the Komborerai at all. Up to now, I'm looking for the Komborerai. I'm looking for it in the town roads and everywhere. But Hindemoni shook Africa, and the singer ended up a governor in DRC. Why then would someone produce a song full of cursing and full of vulgar, and in one week she sells a million albums? Because Beelzebub is a spirit of infection. It spreads out. That's how Satan makes it. It spreads out. So, so, so that's what the Freemasons use. That if you are in our system, we have methods of making anything you do go viral. We control the airspace. We control the, the frequencies in the air. The electromagnetic field. We, we, we control uh, the internet waves. We control radio waves. We control TV waves. How can a bunch of few people come up and shake the Western world to say that children, when they are born, they are neither male nor female. And, and millions of people are buying that rubbish because of Beelzebub. Because they are throwing it on TV. They are throwing it in your iPad, in your, in your phones. It's a spirit of spreading. Now, how can someone with a name like Mazbaba Krayrech start a church in the bush without AC, without a microphone? Two months, yes, 20,000 followers. And we are wondering, where are we going wrong? Beelzebub, the spirit that makes sure, the spirit that makes sure that one girl who failed in life, who is retiring from prostitution, goes on Facebook naked, and in two minutes she has a Range Rover, she has a Ferrari. She has an Aston Martin. She has one of your most favorite cars. And she says, she says, I am a slave queen to boss. And we invite her to teach people business. Huh? And she, 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 she doesn't have anything to teach because she's not telling us who she slept with. And our sisters no longer like getting married or normal relationships. They all want to be like that person. And many social media psychopaths are now the major influencers in our society because of the spirit of Beelzebub. And evil politicians uses that. Uses that. Evil politicians can produce one song and change people's minds 24 hours before the polls. It's not just a song, there is a spirit. Now, we have these forces opposing us. But there is a spirit more powerful than Jezebel. There is a spirit more powerful than Beelzebub. 
There's a spirit more powerful than hell and death. There's a spirit more powerful than Antichrist. He is called the Holy Ghost. He is called the Holy Spirit. John chapter 4 verse 24. For God is a spirit. And them that worship him should worship him in spirit and in truth. Now if God is a spirit. It also means that when I am praying I am talking to a spirit. And the more I talk to a spirit, the more I become spiritual. I don't know why you are not praying. He says, ask and you receive, Matthew 7, 7. Seek and you find, knock and you receive, and, and it will be opened. Papa, if I asked and received, why should I seek and knock when I've already received? Because ask is A, S, and K. When you ask, I've given you, but this is how you receive. You receive by seeking. You receive by knocking. You receive by seeking. You receive by knocking. Elijah was a man like us. Subject to like passion like we are. But he prayed. But he prayed until there was no rain. He prayed again until heaven opened and there was rain. The effectual prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Oh, your effectual prayer are more powerful than Jezebel and her cousins. Your effectual prayers are more powerful than Antichrist and his twin brother. Your effectual prayer is more powerful than dragons with seven heads, 14 heads, 21 heads. Oh, I came to tell you that it's time to draw down 333. It's time to pray. You are revelation sick. You are in a knowledge deficit. You need some prayer. Because girls in your father's household don't get married easy. You need some prayer. Because boys in your father's household, they wake up to the age of 65 and retire in debt. So you have got to pray. Because when you pray, you activate power. And that power is God the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Acts 10, 31, Cornelius, your prayers, your prayers, not your sermons, but your prayers, not your sermons, but your prayers, and your giving, they have been heard by God. As a consequence, he became the first Gentile to receive the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lord said, Preach to all nations, start in Jerusalem and Judea, go to Samaria, after you finish Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, go to the Gentiles. Peter preached in Jerusalem, Acts 2, Peter preached in Judea, and, and Philip the evangelist preached in Samaria, so in chapter 9, Peter had to go to the Gentiles. But the force that was resisting the gospel to get to the Gentiles was so strong. Peter didn't want to go, though he had the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Though the gates of hell couldn't prevail against the church built on his revelation. He couldn't go. There was a force, ladies and gentlemen. God calls Paul, uh, uh, formerly called Saul, but still, Paul is not going anyway because he needs Peter to endorse him first. And up to chapter 12, the gospel is stuck, is stuck, is stuck inside Jerusalem. But in chapter 10, God said no. God said it's enough because there's a man who was praying. Cornelius, ladies and gentlemen, was a soldier. He was not only a Roman soldier, he was a sub-legionnaire, meaning he was one who commanded a troop of multiple centurions, which are called the guard, or which are also, also, which are also called uh, 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 the guard or the Plutonian guards. So he was an army general, he was a commander, and I'm sure he was involved in the crucifixion of Jesus. That's why when Peter was told to go to Cornelius, he said, no ways. Because he knew that this guy 
was part of the prefect who ordered the execution of Jesus. It could be a trick. But it's not a trick because the man has prayed. And it is prayer that made a Roman to receive the Holy Ghost. And here we are because Cornelius prayed. Your family will remain as it is if you are not praying. Your future will remain future bound if you are not praying. Ladies and gentlemen, we must ask. We must seek. We must knock. We must ask until we get the revelation. We must seek until we get the revelation. We must knock until we get the knowledge. I came to tell someone that you have been earmarked for the next level. I came to tell somebody that there is a spirit that overrules all spirits. His name is the Holy Ghost. When Cornelius prayed, he came. If you pray enough, he is with you. He is in you. But he will go all around you. He will move your feet. He will bend your knees. He will be on your mind and will give you words of the Spirit. That one revelation will change your past, your present, and future. Everybody stand on your feet. I came to tell you. 333. Three, three. And the Lord told me yesterday as I was planning. Actually, I was blank until late, late hours. And when this was coming down strong, he said, son, it's about time. With what's happening in Israel, it's about time. Because when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit will raise a standard. The enemy here, the spirit here. The enemy here, the spirit here. The enemy here, the spirit here. He raises a standard. But no prayer, no spirit. No spirit, no standard. No prayer, no spirit. No spirit, no standard. No prayer, no spirit. No spirit, no standard. So today, I declare that you will be a prayer addict. As I wrap it up, Philippians 4 verse 6, be anxious for nothing. Be depressed for nothing. Be stressed out over nothing. But with prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, let all your requests be made known to God. Meaning, the opposite of prayer is stress. The opposite of prayer is depression. The opposite of prayer is anxiety. The opposite of prayer are burdens. And 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Which means transfer the responsibility to him because he cares for you whatever depressing you it's a prayer deficit whatever causing you worry it's lack of prayer any stagnation weighing you down it's a lack of prayer any failure to achieve is a lack of prayer 40 years old you don't have title deeds it's a lack of prayer it's a lack of prayer because where there's no prayer, there's anxiety, there's depression. But let the amount of prayer which is on this altar, in this house, on our mother, be transferred to you today. I activate the prayer spirit in you. I activate it. I activate scriptural prayer by the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Spirit makes you litter your prayers with scripture and God honors scripture has exalted his word above his name and your prayer will be relentless you will push you will push you know Satan he throws warfare and sometimes God takes time to end the warfare because what Satan doesn't know is when the warfare is gone you have been trained to be a prayer warrior. We are prayer warriors. We stand our ground. We are revelators. Put your offering and your tithe in your hand. We revelators. And it's activated. It's activated. It's activated in the name of Jesus. And somebody, you start praying in other tongues. And you take it serious.